Good morning. And welcome to our service this morning. Today is Trinity Sunday, uh, the day in which we celebrate God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I've got a bit of sad news, first of all. Agnes Thompson, who was a member here, died on 28th May at the age of 98. Her funeral will be at Morton Hall at the Pentland Chapel on Thursday, 21st June at 10.30. Agnes was widowed in 1999 and she lived latterly with her daughter, Linda Fraser, and Linda's husband, Bill. Let's just briefly pray for that family. Father, we thank you for a good long life. But there will be sadness there as well. And so do we do pray for Linda and Bill and other members of the family that you would comfort them, that you would speak to them through David's service. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus tells his disciples, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I've told you. And today we're thinking about one of those things, one of those things that Jesus told his disciples. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Let's now worship our merciful God by singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Let us come to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, as we come near to you this morning, we ask that you'd give us a fresh sense of your mercy and generosity to us in Jesus. We also ask that that same generosity and compassion that characterized your son in his ministry on earth would more and more become the keynote of our lives, not only through Jesus' teaching and example, but through the work of your Holy Spirit in us. Lord, even if and when we've done all we should do, we know that we're still inadequate servants. We thank you that your love is bigger than our ability and your mercy is greater than our sins. And yet we know that you command us all to repent, to change in heart and mind, and to believe your promise. So with confidence in your promise of mercy in Jesus, we confess our sins where we failed or gone astray in thought or word or deed when we've not been merciful, but hard-hearted. Lord, bring us to true repentance and a fresh way of living. When we've lost the sense of your goodness and grace, Lord, open the eyes of our hearts and minds. through the ancient scriptures, speak to us. Through the ministry of your Holy Spirit, soften us. Through the ministry of your word, be near. In the stillness, we come personally to you to tell you of any problems or anything that we're struggling with. And we open ourselves to you now. We
We thank you that your forgiveness is offered when we truly and humbly ask. We thank you that when we come close to you, you come close to us, that you help us change, that when we pray, you help us move forward. And all this through Jesus Christ, who loved us before we heard of him and gave his life for us. For this we give you praise, glory, and grateful thanks. Amen. Our next song is, I will offer up my life in spirit and truth. Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, where have we gone? Yeah, we're going to um, ask you if you know this verse in the Bible. It starts, what does God require of you? Now, I've taken away some of the words because you know it far too well. So it's just a wee test um, about if you know this verse. It's to something and it finishes with God. What does God require of you? To love, mercy, what's that? Faith, walk humbly with your God. Uh, to walk humbly, you're right, to walk humbly, that's good. Uh, any other suggestions, things, things we've missed in this? Act generously, act justly, act justly. It maybe depends on your translation. This is all good, this is all good. You know, no one's, what's that? Love, mer love mercy. Walk, so what's the order? Anyone to, anyone to stand up and go for it, get the whole thing right, come on. Act, no, act justly, love mercy. Oh, I think they roll the drums. To act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Fantastic, thank you so much. Can I get a round of applause for that? It's really impressive, thank you so much. Brilliant, brilliant. We're thinking about the Beatitudes, and I would suggest to you they're a wee bit like the Ten Commandments. They're worth learning by heart, as is a verse like this from Micah, which is Micah 6.6. 6. Does it say it? No, it doesn't. It's Micah 6.6, 6, but it really encapsulates a lot of the Old Testament. To act justly, to love mercy, to love mercy. We're thinking about loving mercy this morning. Now, I've asked for a few people to help me, because I've got some shoes here that I'd like a few people to try on. Um, so, the boys at the back, if you're interested in trying on shoes, you're very welcome to come and join us. Uh, but Donald Ramage has said he's always up for, a, up for these sort of things. So Donald, come out and try some shoes on for me, would you? Um, would you give Donald a round of applause, please, for doing that? Thank you so much. <laughs> Donald, these are pretty stylish. I'm pretty hopeful that you like them, you know. So if you could just slip your own shoes off. I can get two, two in one. You could get, do you mean you get two in one? I'll get my two feet in one. Look you get, well, wait and see, wait and see. Try, meanwhile, Martin, are you going to come and try one pair on for me? Could you try a pair of shoes on? Come on then, Martin, you, take, you want to take a shoe off? I'll get you a pair of shoes. Martin, how about these shoes? Martin, come and try some shoes on. Got some shoes for Martin to try on. Martin, slip your shoe off. I'll just, there's a little clip here. Is this what you do, Sheila? Do you want to do this clip here? Make it a lot easier for you. Just slip one of your shoes off. Just take one of your shoes off, Martin. How are you getting on, Donald? Looking good, Donald. Looking stylish. By the way, does NMD have? There's more shoes. We've got two more pairs of shoes. I'll have to pick you otherwise. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a lot more, less painless if you... Martin, what's happening? Come on. Am I going to have to do the... Does this shoe fit, sir? What about chip it, slipping this one off? Oh, and, and putting this one on. Can we, no, you don't fancy, do you want to have a look? Well, while Martin thinks about that, can I have somebody else to try? I've got these boots. Um, so, Anne, you're going to come out and try my boots on? See what you think of these boots. How are you getting on there, Donald? And I've got one final pair. Um, and who, Douglas is looking down, which is always a suggestion that he wants to be, 
he's constantly looking down. Douglas, I got a pair for the, I looked at him and thought, Douglas, do you want to come and try these on? Fantastic. I love that enthusiasm. Brilliant. Because I found these thigh length boots. So if you could, just, just one of them would be brilliant. Um, I'm not quite sure how you enter them. Um, but uh, how are you doing there? Don Donald's, Donald's away. He's taking these home. How are you doing, Martin? Martin's completely unconvinced. Is anybody else? Douglas, come on. I'm sure you can see you in a pair of these. Have you worn these recently, Douglas? This sort of thing. Not for a wee while. Not for a wee while. You want to sit there and slip one of your shoes off and then we'll try these on. Suits you, sir. Can you tell I've worked in a shoe shop? Am I giving that away too obviously? Fabulous. Donald, how's that feeling? It's feeling okay. Where are your feet? Oh! <laughs> It's about this much in the front of those shoes that Donald's got on, but could you walk in them? Uh, he's kind of, yeah, of course I can walk in them. That's great. Do you want to go up the steps in them? Okay. Carefully now, obviously the health and safety. Brilliant, lovely, okay. Down again, showing off the shoes. Doug, if you want to take them home, you're welcome to. But you don't think you'll bother. How does it feel being in those shoes? How far could you walk in them? You could walk quite far, but your sleeve feet would slide up and down, and, get so, and you get blisters. So maybe they're not the best shoes for you. How are you? Oh, Anne's kind of, she's doing all the laces there. And would you come and look at, look at this, man? <laughs> would you look at this? Do you want to stand? <laughs> oh, fantastic. He's got them on. Grand of applause for Douglas. How are you doing? How do they feel? They feel fine. They feel fine. <laughs> it's doing a wee dance in them. Have you been in the, the Musketeers or the kind of Pirates of, Pirates of Penzance? If anybody's watching, that's brilliant. They just suit you as well. I can't say take them home because I know who owns them. You know? But uh, I, I'm, I'm really impressed. Can you walk with them? And Anne, what about you? How are you doing with them? The right boats. Do you want to come up and sit up here and have a wee. Oh, and, and the man himself with the kind of, can, I, can, we, can we stand? Can I, can I help you with stand? Can you walk in them at all? A bit kinky. Okay. Round of applause for our four helpers. I hope someone's taking a picture of these four, because that's brilliant. Thank you. Now, we're thinking today about putting ourselves in somebody else's shoes. These are not your shoes. You've done remarkably well, definitely not. <laughs> you gave me these earlier. Um, you've done remarkably well to get them on. Thank you for participating, but you can't walk very far in them. Um, I'm really impressed you've tried them because sometimes putting on people's shoes, I'm sure you'd can like wonder occasionally. But putting ourselves in somebody else's shoes changes quite a lot, doesn't it? You're not sure how easy it would be to leave the church. You're not sure how far you'd walk in them with, with them. Would you come back to church you're going to be asked to do this every Sunday, Douglas? You know? Um, but we need, when we put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, we don't realize all that they're facing. How life looks when you're trying to, 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 to hobble like, like Douglas is. With, well, he's managing very well, actually. Fantastic. You want to come back down? That's great. Around the round of applause, please. <laughs> Jesus tells a story in the Gospels of a master who was looking at his accounts, and it was that time of year, and he, um, he called in, he was going through who owed him what and how things were, and he came across this huge debt of somebody. And he was a bit worried, and uh, he called the man in, and he said, you owe me a hundred gold coins. A hundred gold coins. This has been building up for ages. I'm going to have to send you and your wife and your family into another place. I'm going to send you into prison, because you can't pay the debt, can you? And the man started crying, and he got upset. And he said, please, please, can you 
have some mercy on me. And the king said, well, you've been doing this for years. This debt hasn't come just overnight. This is for ages you've been building this debt of gold coins up. But in the end, the king relented and he said, oh, I forgive you. Off you go. I know that life isn't easy for you. Off you go. That man, having left the court of the king, saw somebody who had just borrowed something from him the other day and hadn't given him it back. And he grabbed him by the lapels and said, where's my, where's my silver coin? I gave you a silver coin. Where is it? And he had them brought to court, Jesus said, over the silver, one silver coin. Friends had heard of this story and they resolved things. But today we're thinking about loving mercy. And so we go back to our memory verse, our last slide. Could we say this together? What does God require of us? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Clearly you're going to be walking humbly if you're shuffling in those kind of shoes, but it's just this idea of loving mercy. Let's continue that to be our practice as we think more about that this morning. Morning. Our reading this morning is from Micah 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And our second reading is from Matthew 5, verses 1 to 7. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Amen. Our next song we had two weeks ago, it's, it's Show Me How to Stand for Justice, and it goes to the tune of Demon Jesu. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that rightly, but it's a Welsh tune, and it's fairly familiar. ...that once again is happening in the United States over guns, guns and children. People have said, it seems like you love guns more than you love children. We, I think, on this side of the Atlantic, find it difficult to fully understand what is going on there. But our hearts are broken as we see, once again, these tragedies of people just randomly shot dead in their own classroom, children. Quite a horrific and a dreadful thing to happen. And we pray that the... Congress, the Senate, and all that is in the States can change, do something to change the situation. I wonder what our situation would be as a church if we were there, how we'd be responding just now, what we'd be saying as a church in that conversation. Well, a few years ago, in another shooting, a young policeman, Stephen McDonald, was shot by a teenager in Central Park. He ended up paralyzed, and yet he chose to forgive his young assailant. McDonald said, I forgave him because the only thing worse than receiving a bullet in my spine would have been to nurture revenge in my heart. I forgave him because the only thing worse than receiving a bullet in my spine would have been to nurture revenge in my heart. Blessed are the merciful for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the merciful, blessed are the tender ones 
who carry my mercy in their very souls. Blessed are those who tremble for ones whose hearts have holes. For on them will always travel survivors. Blessed are they, my life rafts. And blessed are you as the burdens become too much to bear and the broken people break you. Blessed are you when you are all poured out and now lie empty. For here am I. Blessed are you, child of my heart, for through you my blessings multiply and my kingdom is incandescent. And there on the slide is the meaning of the word incandescent. Blessed are the merciful. The simple beauty of this statement is obvious to our heart and to our mind. But the statement in Matthew 5 verse 7 cuts across the urge to get even with others. It cuts across the hostility towards people who wrong us. It cuts across the apathy in the face of wrongdoing. For Matthew 5, 7 is not saying that wrong things don't matter or that we should avoid conflict by letting people off the hook. Mercy is about doing good to others and giving them what is needed for their fuller experience of life. Mercy is part of a virtuous spiral or current of grace. For in the end, maybe the older we get, we realize more and more often that all of life is grace. Fine words, Peter, but how is this possible? How can we be such people? It's only possible as, as Christians, we come to recognize God's goodness and generosity, forgiveness and delight towards us. It becomes the fuel on which our self-worth and self-acceptance run. We are able to give only because God has given God's self completely to us. Giving to others the same reckless generosity that we have received from God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. I'll continue to quote one or two more poems, but again, wrestle with this, with me. How do we live this? Because occasionally I can be, it comes and something jumps out at me and I, I feel, it's all right, I'll, it doesn't matter, I'll let it go. How can we live this? How can we integrate mercy into the fabric of our lives and our attitudes day by day? Well, for me, it's only maybe if I hold life less tightly Hold it less tightly as, as my thing, my life, and see who and what God puts in front of me each day. If I live from my life from the heart rather than from the head, or get away from the insatiable desire for the next thing, or to be wanted in the busyness, and therefore my vision becomes clouded and I will no longer see so clearly who I am, who God has put in front of me. There's another practical, obvious thing I think we can do to live in mercy, in the light of this beatitude. And I want to tell you it by way of a story 
that is told by Richard Foster and Henri Nouwen. Maybe you've, because it's so well-known author, maybe you've heard the story. The story is called The Fugitive. It's an old story of a young fugitive who was taken in by the people of a small village and given a place to stay. Eventually, inevitably, the enemy soldiers arrived at that village and demanded that the young man be given to them. When the villagers hesitated, the soldiers told the villagers that if they didn't hand the fugitive over to them before the next day, they would burn down every house in the village and they would shoot every man, woman and child there. Frightened, the villagers turned to their beloved pastor for wisdom. Torn between betraying the fugitive and deserting his people, the pastor went to his room and began reading his Bible in the hope that he might come across an answer before dawn. He read all night, and just before dawn, he came across a verse in John, it is better to one man to die than the whole nation to be destroyed. And so trembling, the pastor went outside and told the soldiers where they could find the young fugitive. Once the fugitive had been taken, the villagers began to celebrate, but the pastor felt sick. In his heaviness that evening, an angel appeared unto him. But what have you done, exclaimed the angel. I betrayed the fugitive, said the pastor. But didn't you know that that fugitive you betrayed was the Messiah? No, no, groaned the pastor. I didn't know. How could I have known? How could I have known? The angel spoke. If you'd set down your Bible and looked into his eyes, you would have known. The Beatitudes beckon us to recognize that our life is not our own, to live from the heart, not from the head, and to look into the eyes of others. Lucy Magrath has written this prose. There are days when I imagine that I can knock at your door and you will be there and you will be happy. I see your drive unfolding and your familiar house appearing. The crunch of your gravel under my tentative feet brings you to the window. You would smile and I lift one trembling hand to the worn comfort of your back door. And you would welcome me with repentant arms and we embrace and the hurt and the betrayal is evaporating and is gone. Inside your house there is music, there is laughter, there is love, there are no regrets. I know that if you could just look at me and just see me, just see into my eyes, I would be whole again. And next slide is some words from a 14th century mystic, Julian of Norwich, who said this, the love of God most high for our soul is so wonderful that it surpasses all knowledge. No created being can fully know the greatness, the sweetness, the tenderness of the love that our maker has for us. By his grace and help, therefore, let us in spirit stand in awe and gaze eternally marveling at the supreme, surpassing, single-minded, incalculable love that God, who is all goodness, has for us. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Let's pray. For our hostility to those who wrong us, have mercy, O oh God. For our desire to get even when we are hurt, have mercy, O oh God. For our apathy to wrongdoing and our unwillingness to face hard truths, have mercy, O oh God. Lord Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on me, a sinner. Please join me in prayer as we dedicate the offering. Loving Father, as we bring our offerings, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. We thank you for your unfailing love and generosity and pray that our gifts are acceptable in your sight. Help us to give freely, sacrificially and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us now pray for others. We thank you for the joy of coming together to worship and the opportunity to bring our prayers for others before you. Loving God, we thank you for your abounding and overwhelming love. We thank you for the wonderful mercy shown to us, demonstrated in the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, who paid the price for our sins. We praise you for your forgiveness, benevolence and kindness and for your redeeming power. Loving God, we ask you to help us to be a mirror of this grace in your world. Loving Father, your grace brings us peace. We bring to you our prayers for the many countries dealing with violence and war at this time. We pray particularly for those in Afghanistan who are now suffering under the rule of the Taliban and for the women and girls of that country who are no longer free to work or attend school, and for all those in the country dealing with fear, hunger, and deprivation. We pray too for Ukraine, for all those caught up in the devastation of war, for those who have lost loved ones, for those who have been injured, and for all those who have been displaced and forced to flee. Thank you for all those who have opened their doors to refugees and we ask you to be with them as they offer kindness and support. Help us to alleviate suffering and to bring comfort to those in distress. Lord, by your grace and mercy, bring peace. Father, your grace strengthens us each day. Help us to be more aware of the needs of others in our country. We pray for those whose lives are filled with anxiety, for those in abusive relationships, and for children being brought up in violent homes. We pray for those who are living in poverty, who are finding it difficult to feed and clothe their families and pay for heating. We ask you to guide our government and for our leaders to have integrity and wisdom so that they can support those in need adequately. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one and feel lost and alone. Help us to be ready to show compassion to others and to be generous in our giving of time and resources. Lord, by your grace and mercy, bring comfort. Loving Father, your grace brings healing. We pray for all those suffering in body or in mind for all those whose treatment has been delayed due to COVID and those who are dealing with pain and distress. We pray for all those affected by long COVID and pray that research will bring forward a cure. And in silence now, we bring to you those known to us personally in need of healing. Lord, by your grace and mercy, bring healing. Loving Father, your grace demonstrates compassion. You have anointed us through your wonderful saving grace to show compassion to others. We ask you to help us to show this compassion within our own communities. Thank you for the work of the local churches in providing for the spiritual and practical needs of the community. Um, and we ask you to support all the initiatives which aim to spread the good news of your redeeming power. We thank you for the local food banks and for Food Facts Friends 
as they seek to help those in need. Help us to accept others just as you mercifully accepted us and to be ready to demonstrate this unconditional love towards all those we come into contact with. Lord, by your grace and mercy, bring compassion. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice and mercy, given so that we might have freedom and life. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you as we seek to do your will. And please join with me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Margaret. Our last song is Hear the Call of the Kingdom, Lift Your Eyes to the King. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.